morning. I'm very honored to present today uh, our day two keynote speaker, John Wheeler, Global Research Leader, Risk Management Technology at Gartner. John is a recognized expert and frequent speaker and author on the effective, effective use of risk management practices in large, complex organizations and medium-sized businesses. His major areas of specialty include enterprise operational risk management, executive leadership, and corporate governance. He has 30 years of professional experience in a variety of executive management, financial operations, risk management, and IT-related roles. Prior to joining Gartner, John served as Senior Vice President and Senior Risk Officer within Corporate Risk Management Division at a major U.S. financial services company. John has been outspoken about the need for integrated risk management since um, Gartner made the bold statement in late 2016 that GRC is dead and that it was shifting its focus from GRC to IRM. Please join me in welcoming John Wheeler to the podium. Good morning. It sounds like you had a wonderful event last night. I'm so sad I wasn't there. I didn't know we would have as many risk takers in the bunch. Generally, I know I would include myself, somewhat risk averse. I know you're surprised by that. Um, and I'm also glad to hear that I made the incident report last night on trying to penetrate the walls of this building. And I wanted to come, you know, as any good speaker would, want to check out the room first, but she was having none of it. And uh, even when I, I picked up a program, showed her my picture, held it up, Still couldn't get through, so kudos to you. Great security. You passed with flying colors. So I uh, just want to also say I'm very honored to have been invited to this event. Uh, you know, I know this is the fourth year of the event, and the organization continues to grow tremendously across the globe. I see it in my travels ac across the globe and talking to individuals in their local chapters for the Fair Institute. and. I'm just so happy to be with like-minded professionals in this space who appreciate the need for better risk management and the value that we can bring organizations. And I thought I'd share with you before I dive into the content here, uh, just a quick little story about meeting Jack Jones. And it was about six and a half, seven years ago maybe, uh, while I was at Gartner, and providing him and his team some advice on their solution and the FAIR methodology and how applicable it was to organizations, especially IT organizations that were really struggling in raising the game, the maturity, if you will, of their risk management programs. They're really, as you can imagine, very focused on security with you know, compliance certainly leading the way in helping them to gain budget, but really not focused on true risk quantification. And having come from a financial services environment, I was keenly aware of what Jack had in his solution in the FAIR model and methodology around quantifying risk and giving leaders real real information that they could use to make true business decisions. However, I shared with him some bad news. I said, Jack, this is great, I get it. I think this is going to be of huge value to organizations. You're just about three years ahead of your time. And Jack did not like hearing that message. <laughs> He, he was really ready to go for at that point. I said, Jack, just give it a, a couple more years and it will take off. And today it's evidenced here. It has taken off and I applaud Jack for his work. So. So today I'm going to talk to you about risk quantification in the context of digital business, and certainly in the context of what Gartner focuses on, which is integrated risk management. 
And there are three questions that I hope to answer today. So you, as you leave this room, you should have answers to all three. First is, why now? Why do you need integrated risk management and risk quantification at this point in time? Second, what's different about what's happening in a business that makes risk quantification and integrated risk management so important? And then finally, what does the future really look like? And how will FAIR and integrated risk management help you navigate the sea change that is coming. So to begin, I thought I'd really talk about the risk behind digital business and what makes it different from what you've heard about and seen, and certainly with the FAIR methodology and its focus on cyber risk, what's the difference between the two? And there really is a difference in terms of how Gartner views the two sets of risks. And the, the best way to describe it is, in, in Gartner's view and in my view, cyber risk is that risk from a technology environment perspective. As a business goes out into the world, into um, you know, new markets, new areas, other regions across the globe, cyber is there. It's ever present. It's what they have to navigate on an external basis. But digital business is a little bit different. And digital business and the risks associated with digital are focused on the processes and the products and services that organizations are creating today to drive greater growth. And they are doing it really in two different ways. Some are just kind of you know, putting their foot in the water, kind of getting some incremental gains, and really what I would call just optimizing, kind of nibbling at the edges, which I'll talk about in a moment. But those that are, are truly seeing the opportunities of digital business are looking to change their entire business model, wholesale change to the business. And in fact, that's where we see CEOs and senior leaders really turning for success in the future. And you might think, and I know CEOs think this because they tell me this all the time, what could possibly go wrong? The future really is so bright. And you know, they see things like Bain Capital talking about $520 billion in total spend around digital in 2021, just two years away. McKinsey is, is telling them that by 2025, each year there will be an economic impact, a global economic impact related to digital business of $11.1 trillion. And then ARM, the chip maker behind all the IoT devices out there, they see one trillion IoT or digital related devices in use by 2035. And those devices represent new points of sale, new points of revenue. And CEOs are, are very excited about the opportunity. But as we all know, as risk professionals, huge opportunities bring huge risk. And for digital, it's not only huge risk, it's complex risk. Because the risk of digital lies at the intersection of strategic, operational, and technical risk. And that really is the essence of integrated risk management and why Gartner views it as so important. So to give you a little more information on how CEOs have viewed digital business as a key to their success, we at Gartner perform an annual survey of CEOs across the globe. And going back to 2012, you can see here 
that the trend has been upward in terms of the use of digital in describing their top business priorities. So much so that in 2019, almost 20% or one in five CEOs see digital as critical to, to their business today. And not only that, 82% of CEOs that we surveyed say they have some form of management initiative or program in place today devoted to the digital business. So digital truly matters to CEOs. They get it. What they don't get are the associated risks. And Gartner really defines a digital business as being supported by key drivers of risk as it relates to CEOs need to extend into new markets, reach new customers, but also do that by producing new products and services on the backs perhaps of third parties through broader ecosystems. Certainly looking to Internet of Things to enhance their products and services, but also to reach out into adjacent markets, perhaps, or penetrate deeper into the markets they serve. And then finally, we can't forget the IT systems that we already have in place, the legacy systems and the data trove that exists there that is at risk of being penetrated. And so when you look at customers, <coughs> typically you think about how are they engaging with the digital business differently? It's through mobile and social, and they have all sorts of access risks in getting through to the core network. From an IoT perspective, the devices and the OT, the operational technology vulnerabilities that already exist and will continue to exist over time because it's so difficult to embed in the design of these devices and sensors up-to-date security and technology. Also, third-party compliance risks are ever increasing, especially in the face of greater privacy concerns across the legacy IT systems and other data troves that may exist beyond your core network into the cloud. So I know I'm telling you things that you already know, but this is stuff that CEOs really do not understand. So to bring them that understanding, again, we see IRM or integrated risk management as holding the key to provide that understanding, but also equip you with the capability to articulate the risks in terms that they understand. And that's the key, speaking risk in their language. And so this graphic really represents what Gartner views as integrated risk management and as core to how integrated risk management can support a business. And it requires a little bit of explanation and also for you to use your imagination. And I think with this crowd, I should have no problem with the analogy. How many of you have used or know what a slide rule is? And if anyone doesn't raise their hand, I'll be shocked. <laughs> wow, there's some people who didn't raise their hand. Oh. Well, slide rule uh, certainly was used way back when to help with multiplication. Um, it was essentially an analog computer. And you can use a slide or a, a mechanism along the ruler itself to go back and forth. So if you can envision a slide rule as you look at this graphic, in the center set of arrows here is the slide portion of the ruler that you can slide back and forth on the horizontal axis. And that slide in the center, again, is the essence of integrated risk management. It's the ability to effectively link the strategic risks in your organization that are typically evaluated and addressed, say, by enterprise risk management program or organization, to the operational risks that certainly in financial services or other highly regulated industries 
are program enabled separately. And then the technology risks that you'll find in an IT or cybersecurity risk management program. What we try to do within our research, and also as you see more and more technology solutions coming out to support integrated risk management, is the ability to connect these three layers of risk through views of the asset at the technology layer, so understanding with risk assessment of those assets, what are the most critical technology assets that you have within or outside of your network? And then how do those link into the key business processes at the operational level? And what, what are the most critical? And then ultimately at the strategic level, what are the most critical business outcomes? that CEOs and senior leaders are looking to achieve. When you have that ability to link those through quantitative means, you have really empowered your organization and senior leaders and your board of directors to make the decisions that they need to make. Now, some of you may know that there's been ongoing debate around technology solutions and GRC, governance, risk, and compliance versus IRM. And what, well, some may say that GRC is dead or is dying, namely me. Um, some may say <laughs> that IRM is simply GRC in different clothing, not me. Um, but what I will tell you is GRC really was a starting point. And I've been in the GRC space for almost 20 years now. In fact, I was one of the very first customers buying a GRC technology solution. So I was a proponent of GRC, but what I found was over time, it outlived its use. And so if you can look at this graphic and go from right to left, your right to left, you can see that on the right-hand side, the two objectives, assurance and compliance, those two objectives really are largely geared to the GRC community and technology solution set. And those two objectives are meant to, well, I like to say, keep you out of trouble. And that's what really assurance and compliance is all about, <clears throat> making sure you're addressing the right risks and you're meeting the compliance requirements. Where we're going now into this new world of digital business takes you into the left-hand side of the graphic, and that's the world of performance and resilience, and understanding how you can keep your organization in business as opposed to out of trouble. And that's what matters to CEOs and senior leaders. It's not to say that they they don't want to stay out of trouble, they certainly do, but they're more concerned about staying in business. And so to do that, they're focused on use case domains like business continuity, vendor risk management, and of course, at the very end, digital risk management. And so the slide rule that you have in the middle, that should be slid back and forth, and that same view is needed for each of these use case domains. So not only the three on the left, but also on the right, audit management, corporate compliance and oversight, and enterprise legal management, all need that same singular view of risk, such that they can prioritize the, their efforts along those three lines or three layers of risk, but also harmonize their efforts in conjunction with the other domains, such that you know, and this was always a goal of GRC, sometimes um, not met, but the, the controls that you have in place, the mitigation strategies you have in place are, are doing good and not doing harm. Maybe um, not over controlling or over mitigating or under mitigating. Everything has to work in accordance with the other. So, Given this backdrop, we see, and Gartner is famous for making predictions, but we see by 
2021, 50% of large enterprises will have an integrated risk management solution set in place. And it could be a single vendor solution, technology solution, it could be a multi-vendor solution with integrated points. But either way, organizations, especially large enterprises, are going to need this integrated risk management set of solutions to make better decisions, and certainly make better decisions around digital business. So for CEOs, again, it's, it's about taking the right risks. And when they're taking the right risks, they're doing so because they're taking calculated risks. And calculated risks is where risk quantification comes into play. As it relates to digital business, and as I mentioned before, digital business can have multiple perspectives. And for our clients, we typically see it in these three ways. Technology optimization, business optimization, or digital transformation. The two at the bottom typically relate to incremental change. And incremental change does bring risk, but I would say it's minor in comparison to true digital transformation. And the difference is that digital transformation is focused on growth. The optimization, whether it be technology or business, is typically focused on scale and efficiency. So making do with what you have or doing more with less, as opposed to wholesale change to your business as it exists. And so not only does it require different perspectives of the business, it also requires different perspectives of risk. And what I'm going to present to you here may shake some of you a little bit, because um, it's going to shake your notion of the traditional view of risk assessment and risk understanding. It also is representative, I, I will say, of a very conceptual level of risk. So that's why I have it depicted here in a heat map. And it's not to say heat maps are bad, <clears throat> but they can only take you so far. That being said, this first view of risk and heat map is probably something you're very familiar with. Likelihood and impact leading to a discussion around the highest risks versus the lowest risks. And I see this as a very important view, but a very tactical view of risk. And it's really needed in my estimation when you know the targeted risk level you're seeking to achieve. But when it comes to, I guess, going beyond the view of risk treatment, to developing a true business case, another view is needed. It's a strategic view of risk that flips, really, the understanding by looking at value versus appetite as opposed to impact versus likelihood. And by doing so, it shifts the conversation that you will have with business leaders, with your CEO or others, to more about what are the good risks versus the bad risks? What are the right risks, the calculated risks that need to be taken? And in doing so, you're gonna focus the conversation more on profit generation as opposed to loss prevention or mitigation. And again, both have their place. I say, I say both need to be employed but employed in different ways with different audiences. So to demonstrate more of the business case view, more of that strategic view, I thought I'd walk you through a quick example of what we view as a digital business case. In this example, it was a medical center we were working with 
in the Pacific Northwest who is looking to develop a new digital platform product to allow for virtual patient, patient visits. And they had some goals in mind when doing it. So they saw that the percentage of visits they had virtually today through some you know, basic means, maybe just a web browser, not a true, say, mobile app, was about 27%. So roughly a quarter of the visits were virtual or digital. They wanted to up that to 60%. And that, that's a great goal, but the question that needed to be asked and the questions that you need to ask are, okay, well, what's the outcome that you're looking for? And in here, using the more strategic mindset that I presented earlier on good versus bad risk, they found that the true value they're looking to achieve were better patient outcomes at two to 5% um, uh, higher level in patient outcomes, more positive outcomes at a lower cost, one to 3% lower cost. And that's great gives you an idea of certainly the, the improvements they're looking for, but not necessarily the appetite. And here the appetite was they really were concerned about a reduction in their satisfaction ratings from their patients. They were certainly focused on quality. And so in the project business case that was developed in creating true mobile apps beyond just a web browser app, that has to be considered in terms of the IT or technology group's ability to support both the value and the appetite the organization is set to achieve. And so that's where you really have to start is understanding the strategic business outcomes. And so from an optimization perspective, they can be varied. And, and these, these outcomes, I would say, represent more of key performance indicators. And for the case that I just described, certainly they're looking to improve their operating margin, certainly improve the workforce in terms of employee productivity, having them, the employees focus more on the critical cases, less critical going through mobile apps, and then enhancing the customer experience, providing that convenience. We're starting to see this <coughs> move beyond the realm of just the single healthcare provider. In fact, <coughs> I tweeted out last night that just yesterday, Amazon launched a new product they call Amazon.care. Has anyone seen this? It's brand new. So, um, and it was built actually using some ideas from the business case and, and the um, provider in the Pacific Northwest. What they're looking to do is truly transform healthcare and the delivery of healthcare. So they are bringing their ability to tap into large amounts of data, also with key partnerships with healthcare providers, pharmacy providers, and um, other technology providers to deliver telemedicine directly to the patient and give them the opportunity to access the medication, perhaps the face-to-face the -face medical um, access through a, a home visit, but all through a mobile app. And they're starting off uh, doing this just for their own employee base in Seattle. They're gonna grow it across their organization and through partnerships that you may have seen with other companies like Berkshire Hathaway, JP Morgan Chase, I envision, they haven't stated this, but I predict they're going to grow it beyond Amazon into those employee bases and then beyond and Amazon is going to become a true new industry participant like they are in a lot of under other industries, but they're making a big push towards this. And those are the types of transformational events that organizations and CEOs and senior leaders 
are looking to embrace. And as they do that, they have to have solid business cases and a solid understanding of the risks underpinning those business cases to make the decisions to launch these new products. So for you, what, what does this really mean for you as a risk professional? Well, certainly, you know, we've all been talking about risk tolerance, risk appetite, accountability for a long time. But with digital business, it becomes real. Risk is now becoming a true vital part of the front line. And for technology, it's been there, but it hasn't been a full blend, if you will, of the virtual and the physical worlds in a way that the risk becomes the business. And so senior leaders who are making these decisions, they have no understanding of the risks. Even more important, I think, they have no visibility of the risks. And in many cases, you may be in a similar situation in that the visibility of the risks lies outside your current domain. They could exist in investments or areas of the business that you have no link into or beyond into broader ecosystems and third-party providers. And so for you as a facilitator, of this discussion, certainly within the second line of defense, you have to give them choices, and choices via scenario analysis. And that's where, again, risk quantification comes in to play, those what-if analyses that can help put everything in a true business context, in a context where you're talking about the business risk as opposed to the IT risk or the cyber risk. It is the business risk. So to do this, it requires the full executive team, from strategic to operations to technology. At a strategic level, certainly, you've got your strategic planning folks, marketing, finance, CEO, technology, certainly starting with IT, extending to product, and perhaps legal, and then operations, certainly HR, operations risk, and sales. <clears throat> Those three come together in ways across the team that I haven't seen really come together in this fashion a whole lot in the past. So not only is it gonna require integration of your program and approach, it's gonna require integration of these folks in their views of the world to be successful. So to bring this home and the way Gartner sees the future of integrated risk management, <clears throat> the program approach that we, we recommend contains three components. And that is first starting with a framework which I'm sure everyone would agree here is needed. And the framework being the taxonomy, the organization infrastructure, the ability to communicate about risk on a regular basis in ways that everyone can understand. And these two worlds are colliding just as digital business is bringing uh, the, the collisions and the blending, if you will, of worlds. And it starts with cybersecurity and tech risk with standards like NIST, cybersecurity framework, the ISO 27000 series on the security perspective, focused really on clients that we serve day in and day out, the CISO and the CIO. And then trying to align that with the chief risk officer and their focus on COSO, ISO 31000, enterprise risk. And the two, while you would think they would be very much aligned, when you talk to individuals and what they do on a daily, day-to-day uh, -day business perspective, they really aren't. And even 
you know, given the fact that technology risk truly is a subset of operational risk, many times we see these programs working separately. And so as digital, digital business takes hold and digital risk management as a program takes hold, you're going to see some key drivers be managed in different ways in that things like cloud, IoT, big data fall more towards, say, the natural responsibility of the tech risk environment, whereas mobile, social, third party, a lot of those investments are being driven on the business side and may be greatly influenced by a CRO or a COO rather than a CIO or CISO. And integrated risk management is built and designed to bring those worlds together and really focus on the second key element of integrated risk management programs, and that's metrics. And that's where risk quantification comes into play. And helping to balance the view of performance risk, which we've already discussed, with regulatory risk, understanding those key risk indicators and metrics that can help you create a true risk strategy that aligns with the business. And then ultimately, all of this is pulled together by the third key element of the IRM program, and that's systems. So you're certainly gonna need processes and technology solutions to bring all this together. Now those three framework metrics and systems, we describe in that order for a purpose. Is as you build your program, you've got to start with the framework first, get everyone on a level playing field, then address the metrics, identify how you're going to measure risk, quantify risk on an ongoing basis to monitor and manage the discussion, and then finally look to systems, implementing technology. We, we see too often organizations will leap to technology first, a lot of times because vendors profess that they have the solution to all their problems, but they don't. Y you've got to go through those first two to get to the ultimate right technology solution. So to give you an idea about technology solutions and where they are in terms of their maturity, this is from our latest hype cycle report we published just two months ago, and this is something we do on an annual basis directed specifically at risk management. Now I've highlighted the two key areas that we've discussed today, digital risk management and integrated risk management. And you can see digital risk management is just in its early phases of development. And it will not come into mainstream adoption, and mainstream adoption we say is 50% or more of enterprises using that technology. It won't come into mainstream adoption for another five to 10 years. On the other hand, integrated risk management is further along and really is a foundation for digital risk. We see it coming into mainstream adoption, as I shared with you before, within two to five years. So 2021, we see large enterprises reaching that 50% mark. So it just gives you an idea of how things are progressing and where the challenges are going to be coming from and why risk quantification is going to be so important. We also see a need from a technology solutions perspective to take integrated risk management and link it to two other key areas of technology to create what we call a digital risk management solution stack. And that is being able to be informed by your BI or analytics tool and at the same time, inform or be informed by a new area of technology we call security orchestration, automation, and response. It's really encapsulating all the security, key security processes and data points from a threat and vulnerability perspective into a single platform. When you have those three fully integrated, you will have that well-founded opportunity to make the decisions or inform the key leaders to make the decisions they need to around digital business. 
And how do we know this? Well, we also survey CIOs on an annual basis, and they tell us they're certainly focused on growth around digital business, BI analytics, the digital business. It's the top performers that also understand the risks. And that will change as things mature. And as they mature, the technology solutions will mature and they will give you the ability to view digital risk along these lines by integrating solution elements that already exist today in terms of cloud security intelligence, mobile device management, and others. But to bring that together in a way that you can start to monitor and manage using key risk indicators purely related to digital products and services. So with that, I'm gonna wrap up and leave you with just a few key pieces of Gartner research that you might wanna get your hands on if you'd like to learn more about what I talked about today. And I just really wanna thank you for your time and attention. Again, it's so great to be in the room with my friends, like-minded professionals, and I really wish you the best of luck and enjoy the rest of the day. Take care.